My first thoughts about this camera is that it's great. The AF is great, uh, obviously thanks to Canon's dual pixel photo focus system, it just works wonders. And I don't understand the uh, bragging about, uh, I'm sorry, there's the screen, there's the friggin flippy screen I was I was talking about all this time while I had the Sony that we don't have it but now I do have it and I'm always looking at it I don't know if it's a good thing or not that I have a flip screen now so yeah excuse me I'm talking to you now um, I don't understand why people uh, whine so much about geez this is getting out of hand uh, about uh, the autofocus points being crunched in the middle which is not really the case because uh, if you go to the menus and select uh, zone focus manual zone focus you can choose from a middle section and then from the side sections and it's true that it's not like all the way out to the end of the screen like from from side to side on the sensor uh, it's not that much but but we are within the lines of the rule of thirds so that's great and also if you turn on the live view mode which I'm doing right now obviously I have to turn on the live view mode for video recording you get more uh, AF points because look at that if if this was in photo mode the AF points would be like there like that's the that's the end of them but I can go as far as this I, I mean I'm not even sure if I can go as far as that because I can see yeah yeah so I can go pretty far out to the sides and the AF is just uh, it, it's just sticky man so this is really this is a really good AF system I absolutely love it um, in some ways I think it's better than uh, what I had in the a7 II obviously it is because this camera is like three years younger I think because the a7 II came out in uh, 2014 and this is 2017 or something along those lines um, it's definitely heavier so obviously Canon packed in a huge mirror box in this camera that has some weight and uh, I don't know the build is just more more ma massive more robust um, I think sometimes it can be a pain in the ass but I just love that it feels like it feels definitely feels like a good sturdy camera that can withstand a lot of uh, abuse which I am planning to do with it because this is my main workhorse right now um, for next year, because it seems like um, things are going to go back to normal, more or less. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, I wish I knew. But um, I already have some weddings booked. And what I thought is that I'm going to buy a second camera, which is, I think it's going to be a 5D uh, Mark III because I only need that for photo. I think the photo AF, I've tried one, the photo AF of the 5D Mark III is fantastic. <clears throat> you don't have AF in video. That's why I stuck with the 6D. But yeah, so I already have some weddings booked, so I'm gonna get a second, uh, now preferably Canon camera, and uh, I'm gonna put these cameras through their paces and uh, see if there's anything to the hype so the things I don't like about this camera it's yeah the weight the added weight of everything that comes with the DSLR I obviously don't like that the placement of the shutter speed selection dial on the top is weird but I know Canon does that with their cameras uh, I, I much more prefer what Sony and Nikon are doing um, they put it on the front of the grip um, I'm missing the thumb dial thing you know the back not the not the rear bottom dial 
but the one that's on the back of the camera I miss that very much uh, but yeah there's one at the bottom right corner the main dial on the back side I'm talking too much it's just a dial yeah whatever I miss that dial so that's that um, what else I would have loved to try a joystick for the AF selection but I don't have that the 6D Mark II has a d-pad and it's completely functional and actually the screen is a touch screen so I can select focus points there so I don't care that much um, things yeah th these things I wanted to mention the touch screen is wonderful it's not the uh, sort of touch screen that Sony is doing like you can select AF points and uh, whatnot, but you can't enter the menu or change the settings. I know they have created another touch menu system, which is now working, I suppose. But eh, this is a real touch screen, so you can you can select AF points, you can change the settings, you can uh, scroll through your images, you can do everything with it, and it's working very well. So I love the touch screen. Um, what else do we have here? I think everything else is pretty much straightforward. So I mean, if you held the camera in your hands once in your life, you're gonna know what to do with this one. Obviously, it's full frame, and uh, yeah, that's that's uh, that's pretty much the deal. It's a good camera, and I definitely don't regret buying it. I wish it was mirrorless. Uh, little bit smaller and lighter I don't have that much problem with the size but more with the weights but I think I'm just gonna get used to it so um, yeah that's that so that's it for now I think uh, if you like what I'm doing uh, please press the subscribe button or at least consider it because it helps me out a ton and if you like this video you can also press the like and uh, if you press the subscribe then you can also press the, whatever the hell that is, the bell, yeah, the bell. So it's down there, it's tingling. Well, not yet, but if you tingle it, it's gonna be. <laughs> so yeah, that's it for now. And let's see a ND filter fade out, which probably won't happen because I have also ISO. Sheesh, how does that look? We are at 25,000 ISO, now 16,000, this is crazy.